Joining us, the man, the myth, the legend, David Ortiz in the house. My man. Happy opening day. What's going on, man? Opening day is always a good day, huh? I, how has it been 20 years? Man, it's been fast, but it seems like it was yesterday. Right? Doesn't count on me, man. It seems like I... I still look the same, don't I? All right, so we, you know what? No, no, no lie. We had a conversation about this yesterday. I was over at the thing with a bunch of the guys, and we were talking about who looks like they've gotten old and who doesn't, and they were all talking about you as a guy who doesn't look like you've aged a lot. Uh, black don't crack. You know that. <laughs> we and that'll do it for this show. We'll just put it over to that side for the rest of the show as we sit here and age. When, when you see these guys, does it take you right back to that team? in those moments in those games unbelievable you know like last night at dinner uh getting to see all my boys that was something that it was uh uh it brought so many memories you know what i'm saying and uh, uh we had conversation you know uh um you know going back it was it was those wonderful days i mean it, it was it was something very special and I, i'm glad to see all of them pretty much um it was something that it was it was a good time. Well, tell me this. Now, how did you – your life changed from Minnesota to Boston. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were still in Minnesota, nothing like this. They would have heard of Big Poppy. Probably not. Probably not. But you know what? Um, sometimes – this, this is what I say to a lot of managers, you know. Sometimes you got to lose the change, you know, on some players. You know, that's exactly what happened once I got here. Because coming through the minor league, what I ended up doing as a player, that's what I was showing up in the minor league, you know. And it seems like my career stopped once I got to Minnesota because they want to change my swing. They want me to start swinging the bat differently, you know, and this and that. I got here in my very first at bat in the spring training against my boy Kyle Lowe's. I got a man in second base with no out. He threw me a two-seamer over there, and I tried to move him over and hit second base, just like in Minnesota all days, you know. And I was going back to the dugout, everybody stay put. And the manager put me to the side. He told me, hey, big boy, next time I don't want you to move him over. I want you to bring him in. And that, you know, that was it. That was sort of, uh, that's what I was looking for as a player, you know. Mm -hmm. Give me the freedom mm -hmm. to swing the bag like I know how. You to know? be yourself, that's exactly right? What happened. Be exactly. yourself. Yeah. Be myself, and, 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 and the rest is history. We were with Terry Francona yesterday, and, and he did such a great job of letting all you guys be yourself. Letting Manny be Manny, mm -hmm. right? Letting you be you. Letting Johnny Damon do his thing. And Derek, L a lot of big personalities on that team. Oh, yeah. A lot of guys a little bit out there, mm -hmm. okay? A little bit. Uh, <laughs> that's nice. But you guys had a way of getting all that out of the way in the clubhouse. And when you hit the field, you were ready to play baseball. I don't know that I've ever seen a team do that like that. Let's not forget that this game, people sometimes don't realize the pressure that goes on on that field. I mean, sometimes I think it's it's good to be a little ooh, ooh a little out there to be able to put that pressure aside and just focus on what you wanna uh, end up doing, you know. And I think this that that group of guys was capable of doing that because, you know, right after everything went down and probably years while I was playing, I never sit down and thought about that coming from behind. The old and three coming from my, I see that as a, one of the most difficult things to do. And I still ask myself how we did it, especially against the ball club. The Yankees have so much thunder on the ball club, and we were able to. So I guess, you know, being a little out there worked to, to be able to, to do that. You look at a situation where you're talking about the Yankees or you're talking about Baltimore, we felt the same way when we played the Yankees at Baltimore. We got up for those games, okay? And then all of a sudden, like Pop was saying, that we they picked each other up. Hey, man, don't worry about it. I got you. Poppy going to get him. Manny going to get him. Johnny Damon going to get him. Derrick Lowe going to go out throw a hell of a game. We're going to get him. Don't worry about that, it. That's we, a we good feeling as a, as, a, as a being part of a ball club and even being a player when you know that you don't have to carry all the responsibility because you know you got some stud back there that they are capable of getting it done too, you know. So that 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 as a player that go into your favor. But you had it one through nine. That's right. Well, nine. We got to talk about clubhouse culture mm -hmm. too, right? Like I wasn't there in 04 and 07, mm -hmm. uh, but in 13, it's like you have that team who just is constantly like got your back, constantly mm -hmm. pulling for you. If one guy fails, the next guy up, 
gets it done because everybody cares about each other. Everybody loves each other. They're crazy. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. part of it, you know, and um, that that matters. And you guys had that in that 04 team. That was the first team that I, I remember watching thinking, like, these guys are, are brothers. You know? it, it carry over. Yeah. It carry over, you know. It, it is something that uh, – it's a culture. It, it's something that you come from some of the places. Like, we had guys coming into the Red Sox from some of the places, and all of a sudden – they follow the track right away, and even their game get better because now you you walking into a situation where everybody's thinking about winning. You're watching everybody getting prepared, mm. and all of a sudden you're on the right track. You see, he's, like, he's bringing that up and thanking you because now nobody thinks of him as Mr. Interference, right? That's just all <laughs> washed up. Yeah, yeah. That's why he's bringing thankfully, that up. Thankfully, right. hey, thankfully he hit 780 in that in that World Series, and we have to worry about it. You know, we, we talk about picking each other up. It's just like we face in Baltimore. Okay, you got Jim Palmer pitching. Palmer was the number one pitcher. Palmer, he got us. You know what he's saying? Number two and number three and number four, we got him. Mm, they got to get paid. <laughs> See? <laughs> we, 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 hey, guys, we got number two, number three. You going. know what I remember? In, when, when I think back to those days doing the pregame, postgame show, in the middle of that Yankee series, what I, what I remember after games two and three is several guys, and, and you were one of them at the time, but they're all saying, I don't want his season to end. I don't want my team. You know what I mean? It was about each other. And you don't see that on every team, right? Because it's just an individual sport and you're caught up. I remember you guys all talking about how happy you were for the other guys in your clubhouse that that season had kept going. You were playing for each other. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I never want to really go into what is happening in baseball right now individually. But at the end of the day, it's a team sport. You know, at the end of the day, everybody had to come in the clubhouse with the mentality that, hey, listen, the same amount of time that I spend with my family, I probably spend more time with these guys in this clubhouse. So these guys are my family. I had to protect this house. I had to bring to this house my best face, my best game face every day to be able to provide. And that's how the culture in the clubhouse was built up throughout that time. And, of course, you had Millar pouring whiskey over in the corner, but that's a whole different story. Once in a while. Once in a while. <laughs> hey, it's hey, good for you. Well, hey, I, what goes on in the club? I stay in the club. I can't that's let right. you leave without talking about the patch on your sleeve. Uh, Tim and Stacy are gone. It's, uh, it's, it's a hard day to get through without thinking about them. What did he mean to you? That was my family, man. Like I say, you know, him and his wife, Stacy, man. I love Stacy. Stacy was like a sister to me. Tim. People know my history with him. I mean, this guy, he put in a smile on my face of all time. I mean, I learned so many wonderful things from them. He supported me on everything. I mean, as a teammate, off the field, foundation-wise, he was the perfect man, you know, that, that you know, he, nobody going to be able to replace him or Stacy. you know what I mean, and, and, and you know, the past year since I remember uh, going with him to Stacy uh, for chemo, um, that was when the, the, the clock started ticking. But the one thing that I never even crossed my mind was losing him, you know. And, and I have so much hope for Stacy to get better and all of a sudden all this is happening. It's hard, man. It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. It has been some tough time uh, for all of us. To, to be able to deal with this and put up with this. But the message that I want to say to everybody is, let's keep in mind all the wonderful things that they did as a couple for all of us. Let's, let's live through that. Let's, let's always uh, uh, put that on our mind because that's the only way we can remember them. It means a lot having you all here to uh, honor his legacy. Poppy, we appreciate the visit as always. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. David Ortiz is going to get pulled in about 12 other directions here in the next five minutes. (laughs) We're going to let him go. There's a line of people off camera right now waiting for David Ortiz. (laughs) 